everyone, and welcome back to Casual Climbers, the podcast by and for beginning hikers and those who may not quite be physically ready to tackle the Appalachian Trail. I'm your host, Roy Padrick, and alongside me is my wife and adventure buddy, Donna. Hi, everybody. In this podcast, we provide you with information, tips, and tricks on how to get into hiking in the Blue Ridge area. We will cover some of the hundreds of trails in the various parks in the region and hopefully entertain you along the way. We're two middle-aged, not in the best shape hikers. You said it, not me. Who love the outdoors and want to share our experiences with you. So in this week's episode, we have a quick and easy two for trail. It's Aquina Falls and Stump House Tunnel in Oconee County, South Carolina. We'll also have a supersized fun fact segment about the tunnel construction and the people who worked on it, as well as the legend of Issaquina by Donna. Finally, we'll have my review of my new favorite trail accessory, a filtered water bottle. What do you say, Donna? Let's get into it. Okay, let's go. So this week's episode is less about a long hike and more about two really interesting destinations that have hiking capabilities to them. Right. So in Oconee County, there is this park that's run by the city of Walhalla, and it's called uh, Stump House Tunnel Park. And here it is by the numbers. The tunnel itself is one quarter of a mile long. At the park is also Issaquina Falls. And getting to the overlook at Issaquina Falls is only 0.1 miles from the parking lot to the Falls Overlook. Yeah, it's really beautiful. It, and it, it's so short. It's really beautiful. But you get the added bonus of there is a very challenging trail. It's less of a trail and more of a slightly worn path going down to the bottom of the falls. And we did that. Yeah. Added bonus, though, you would you would call that an added bonus. I mean, I, if somebody is an unfit hiker in the Carolina, we've been to Issaquina Falls twice before, I, I think. And neither of those times did we hike down to the bottom of the falls. This is the first time that we hiked down to the bottom of the falls. So we didn't think of that. Like you said, it's more like a worn path down. We didn't think of that as an added bonus. It's an added bonus if you really want to get to the water and be under the waterfall. If you really want to get to it, yes. If you just want to see a waterfall, you can easily see the waterfall without hiking down. Yeah, from the, over, from the overlook. And it, and it gives you a really gorgeous view of the waterfall from the overlook. And so there's pictures on our website, episode 12 of the trail photos. You'll see Issaquina Falls. We took pictures from the overlook and down From the bottom of the waterfall. Yes. And I'm super glad that we did hike down. We weren't really planning on exerting ourselves this time because we kind of, the hike last week kind of kicked, I don't know about you, but it kicked my butt. So we were going to just take it easy. We were going to take it easy. And it's a Queen of Falls is a great destination for people to to go to anyway. Right. And Stump House Tunnel is very interesting. And you're going to hear today, listeners, and Donna's fun fact, all about both. Super interesting history to Stump House Tunnel and the legend surrounding Issaquina Falls is really fascinating. So it actually is only a hundred feet elevation change from the overlook to the bottom of the falls. Really? That's it. It doesn't feel like it, does it? No, because it's it there's a lot of places that are very straight down. It feels like um there were there were moments where you were like well, you, you just have to jump. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, I don't know if my knees and my hips are going to be happy <laughs> with this decision. Yeah. So, listeners, let me tell you this: it's not exactly a trail. It's more like you're winding down over rocks, over and rocks, and like boulders, and roots, and not so many like broken trees to climb over, nothing no, like that. But no, it's really you know just kind of. I mean, and there's there's these points where you're like. Should I go left or should I go right? Which way is going to be easier? But getting to the bottom, there is a pool of water that that you were able to. I it was kind of cool for me to get in the water, but you're kind of a polar bear or oh, something. Oh man, I love I love waterfalls. I love getting close to them. I love feeling the spray. And so we've had quite a bit of rain up here lately, and the falls were just flowing yeah it It was was loud really coming down yeah and so once you make your way to the bottom and i i I will just put this out there if you were at all concerned about your sure-footedness don't try it yeah it's 
it is very difficult to get down and then back up. There are steps that you, not steps, not real steps, but there are elevation changes in this tiny little path that goes down that will require you to step up 18 inches and hold on to some very tenuous roots or trees going down. So yeah. if or, you're or, at all concerned about the health of your knees or your sure-footedness and you don't have the right shoes, if, I, I can't imagine going down there with like flip-flops. Oh my God, like no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I had my hiking shoes on, but you had non-hiking boots. Yes, these were just some boots that I got on Amazon for, I think, $35. They did have some tread to them, and I was super impressed with them. I, they're more just, you know, boots that kind of look like almost like Little House on the Prairie boots, but they have that zipper on the side so you don't have to unlace them and everything every time. They're terribly cute boots. They're very, they're, I got them for the cuteness factor. Yeah. Not for hiking. I did not know that we were going to be climbing all over I didn't, a mountain. Yeah. When we set out two days ago, we did not plan on doing a long no. hike because we knew. We didn't even bring our, pike, our, our hiking, hiking poles. poles. No. We knew that Stump House Tunnel is a fairly easy walk. You can absolutely do that. We'd been there pops. twice before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we knew that you could get to the overlook from the parking lot to Issaquina Falls Overlook. Very quickly. I mean, it's less than 0.1 miles from the parking lot there. And it's a very wide, simple path to get to the overlook. So we were not expecting that. But when we got there, we were like, you know what? Let's Let's... check out the bottom of the falls. And then at the Stump House Tunnel, we were like, you know what? Let's let's see if we can find the ruins of Tunnel Hill that was once on top of it. Mm -hmm. And listeners, you're going to you're going to hear all about Tunnel Hill. And you're going to hear all about Issaquina Falls in Donna's Fun Fact. But I'll just give you a little preview. Uh, The Blue Ridge Railroad was designed to go from Charleston all the way to Knoxville, Tennessee. And so they had to drill through some mountains to get there. And this was in 1850s. Well, they started drilling through Stump House Mountain. They didn't make it all the way. Donna's going to give you all those facts later. But the tunnel's still there that goes deep into the mountain. The unfinished tum- tunnel, yes. It doesn't go all the way through. You can walk in and walk out, yes. Yes. Um, and it's, I, I don't know, you said you could do it in flip-flops. I don't think you'd want to do it in flip-flops because it's cold in there. Probably not. It's yeah. cold and wet it's in there. It's what, 55? Is I, that what yeah. it says? Yeah. Which a- might be refreshing in the summertime, but I'm one of those people that I have to have a summer sweater is what I call it to go into grocery stores because grocery stores are too cold for yeah. me in the summer. Yeah. So that's, that's Stump House Tunnels, and we'll talk about that and the hike that we made up to the top of Stump House Mountain here in a minute. Um, but back to Issaquina Falls. Once you get down there, if you can make it down to the bottom, right, once you right. get down there, it's actually really nice. There's yeah. plenty of rocks to sit on. And when you say rocks, you're big boulder. Boulders. Yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about pebbles. I'm right. talking about big boulders that you can sit on, and you get a spectacular spectacular view of the falls oh yeah it's just the feeling and and one other thing too is that if you look you know you get down to the bottom you look to the left and there's this 100 feet of beautiful waterfalls but if you look to the right it continues on down there's another waterfall i guess or the water's falling off and down and smaller waterfalls it yeah. just kind of cascades so, all the way down the mountain mm-hmm, yeah yeah so you're you're just on a le- a, a part of, of where the water is like pulled and i mean it's a big part it is yeah but... it's there, there's plenty of room there for for people to get down i enjoyed so i in my review today i'm going to talk about my filtered water bottle i brought it with me i filled it up with waterfall water and it was so cold and it was so delicious and i got wet filling yeah. it up and i knew i was going to get wet and i was hoping i was going to get wet i mean i didn't break a sweat getting down there I only, I would say I mentally broke a sweat just because as I was going down, I was thinking, A, are my knees going to be angry with me going down? And B, I got to get back up these rocks. Is this where I live now? (laughs) Yeah, it's so tenuous getting down there. You really have to be so, so careful. And, And gosh, it probably took us. 25 minutes to go 100 feet, you know, that's that's <laughs> because, how tenuous it is. Yeah, you have to stop and be careful. Yeah, you have to really pick your footing very carefully. And choose your path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So so that was this Queen of Falls. It's gorgeous. If you just want to see the overview, the, yeah, the, you can get there in two minutes from the parking lot if, it, if you walk very slowly. Yeah, and there are picnic tables up there too. Yes, yeah, picnic so. tables up there. And, and a, a couple of benches. 
I love benches. Yeah, benches are, <laughs> benches are pretty great, especially when you're on your way back up. I right. think you stopped at the overlook oh, and, yes. and sat yeah. down. No, the first bench I got to when I got back up the mountain, yeah. uh, that bench was mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is a little park area just beyond the parking lot that has two bad, that has a male and a female bathroom. Yeah. Uh, there's no running water, so it's more like a... Por- por- like a... a it's like a permanent constructed porta potty. Yeah. yeah. But there is picnic tables and grills up there if you wanted to, uh, you know, stop and relax and have a picnic. Beyond that is the Stump House Tunnel. Yes. So there's a separate parking area for the Stump House Tunnel. And then you walk up and you there's wa- this nice arch going up. Yes. And it's a pretty steep incline yeah. going from the parking area to the entrance of the tunnel. I wanted to make sure that you clarified when you say walk up, you're really walking up. Like it's a really good stretch for your foot if you have plantar fasciitis. And like your calves. I, yeah, yeah, and your calves, yeah. Um, because your foot, you're going up. And it's probably a 10 to 12 degree grade going up. It's not it's terribly paved. long though. It's it is paved. paved. Yeah, yeah, it is paved. It's not like we, I didn't bring my hiking poles or anything. No. And didn't really feel like I needed them. But last summer when we went there, I ha- I think I had to stop when I was going up. I had to take a break and continue on up, I think. I don't remember that, but maybe. But we also have to remember we have over 100 miles of trails yeah. under our belts now that we did not then. Yeah. So we, and, we are in a little bit better shape. Yes. And I'm 30 <laughs> pounds less than I was, yeah. too. So. so kudos to you for that. Yeah, so I'm not, tr- that's 30 pounds that I was That you're not carrying around up. with you. Yeah. yeah. At the top there is a, before the Stump House Tunnel on the right, is an old railway car. Now, it is not, it is not one of those passenger cars. It is a, a cargo car, but it's neat. And there's a little, there's several placards or signposts, whatever you want to call it, that give you some of the history yeah. of Stump House Tunnel, but you're going to get way more history today in Donna's Fun Fact. You keep talking about that. You're talking I'm me up. What, what if it's like, what if it's a dud? I if don't you know. dud, I, I don't know. The <laughs> you... listeners, will, they'll, they'll come at you with torches and pitchforks. Okay. I, I don't know <laughs> but the Stump House Tunnel's up there. Uh-huh. And so once you get to the entrance of Stump House Tunnel, you can immediately tell it is exceptionally dark in there. There's no lights. Yes. Very dark and very wet too. It uh, it was wetter this side. Like there's water dripping. Now it's it's primarily on the two sides of the tunnel, but every once in a while there's a drip in the middle. And we did a cave tour one time, and we were told that if water drips on you inside a cave, that's a cave kiss. So we got kissed a lot yesterday. We got kissed some. Yeah, yeah. it's cold. It's cold and it's wet and yeah. I, yeah. It's, and dark. It, and It's very, very dark. You definitely should bring a flashlight or use the flashlight on your phone. Right. Because um, and the, once you get, the, gosh, a quarter of the way in, if you don't have any lights, it's, it's pitch black. Right. So you could, I mean, I guess you could depend on other people around you who might have lights. Which, if there's other people. Yes. Yeah. The cave floor, or can I say cave, the, the tunnel floor, it feels very much like a cave. But the tunnel floor, it, you can't depend on it to be completely smooth or it's bumpy. It's, it's very there's bumpy. Divots. There's divots. There's divots. There's kind of deep holes. So from from the, probably from the water dripping i would think so sure. yeah making yeah these... it's it's not paved at all it's completely dirt and rock i felt like it was more rock than dirt i didn't feel like my shoes necessarily got dirty but there's a there's a sign that talks about how you should make sure if you wear certain if you wear a pair of shoes in say mammoth caves or, or some other cave then don't wear those that same pair of shoes into this because it can affect the flora and fauna or something like it. You can like bring cave, I forget what it's called. Uh, Different contaminants in yes. there. Yeah, so w- we've we've done a lot of cave tours Yeah. in, in various parts of, of the country, and we love them. We love the cave tours. And that, that, that warning is given to us every single time. Mm-hmm. Each cave basically has its own ecosystem. Right. That's it. Yes. But I find it interesting because this is not a cave. It's a tunnel. It's, it's a, a tunnel. man-made tunnel. But it, like I said, it feels very much like a cave. And I guess they want you to treat it like a cave. I guess. There's bats that live in there. There are bats that live in there. I, I haven't seen any of them, though. I didn't either. So the, the ceiling's about 25 foot high. So it's not terribly high. You know, you and I have been in caves where the ceiling is massive six feet up and then it's 
200 feet up like we were in Ruby Falls cave. It's probably just a good practice, right? Mm -hmm. To try not to contaminate natural ecosystem. I'm sure they have fungus and yes, and uh, different lichens that grow in there that they want to try to protect. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to really talk about the tunnel itself. Donna's going to get into it and the fun facts about how it was built and the people who built it. But there is a, I'm not going to call it a trail so much. As a but path. There is a very sort of. primitive path that heads up to the top of Stump House Mountain, just outside the entrance to the tunnel. So tell, tell them a little bit about that. So once you're coming outside the tunnel, if you look to your right, there's water. And there are some rocks that it looked like maybe, maybe if you were a good climber, you could maybe climb up those rocks to get to the top. We considered it for about, what would you say, 10 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we were You'd like, almost no. have to have rock climbing gear to right. get up that area. Yes. Yeah, so we didn't try that. But then we just kind of walked around exploring and we walked around to the left. So if you go straight past the train car and then you go left around, that's where we found this other primitive path that looked like it was more doable for somebody of our expertise. <laughs> yeah. And again, we didn't have our hiking poles or anything and, and you didn't, didn't have, have your hiking boots. Right. But we were able to get up and it was just as challenging. That was yeah. As the, the going down to Issaquina Falls, except it was much higher. Yeah, and I would almost venture to say that was more challenging. I felt like there were more places where I needed to grab a tree or something to yeah. sort of help me up. And we definitely climbed for longer. So, 270 feet. Okay, from, so from almost three times as long. Yeah, almost three times as long. So the parts of the, I mean, it was, when I say primitive path, I mean... If you weren't really looking for it, you wouldn't be able to tell it was a path at all. Right. There were moments on that path that you're walking and there are leaves from bushes that are brushing against your shoulders on both sides at the same very time. Very narrow in some parts. Very, very narrow. But once you make your way all the way up, that is where the old Tunnel Hill settlement, the people who built the tunnel, lived. But there's no remnants of it there. The only thing that's up there that we were able to find. And we spent quite a while up there looking yeah. around for it. There is a fence surrounding one of the tunnel shafts right. that provides ventilation for the tunnel. It's the fences all around the shaft. You can't fall in it unless you either climb over the fence or find a hole through it. Which, but you can look yeah. down a little bit into it and, and see. But that's, that's all there was. I was hoping to find foundations or, you know, maybe old chimney. I'm guessing Staff. that that fence, because that was a really, that was a really high fence. It was probably what? Eight feet. Eight, yes. Yeah. I'm guessing that somebody has fallen down there, gotten injured, maybe I would think killed. so. I, That's the yeah. only reason they'd put that up. Some idiot fell down mm, the thing. I don't know about idiot. I mean, we, if, if we, if we were able to, we would have gotten closer to that hole and said, oh, what's this? And then, you know. Maybe, but they're. There are holes in the fence, unfortunately, that you can get in, and we didn't even bother because mm. what's the point? You know, we're yeah. gonna look down there. What are we gonna see? You know, a black hole. So yeah, but you did actually find another thing up there on up. I think further there was like concrete blocks. There was a cinder block foundation of some kind, but cinder so, blocks aren't that old. Yeah. So sixties, fifties, sixties is when cinder blocks started being a, a, a thing? big thing. So it's not I that old. It's that, that there's a story there. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's something there. Who, but... who brought that up there? How did they get them up there? Why did they get them up there? And, and it, it's, it's, it's a ruin. Yeah. It's the foundation of something. Right. But it, the, now, it you very, say very foundation, small. but I don't know. Found, it's, it's the square. And then there were trees growing out of the middle of it. Yeah. I swept away some of the leaves. Mm hmm. To see if I could see any type of foundation and it was just dirt. But mm. I bet if I dug, there'd probably be something there. I don't know. It's maybe I, it, it's did somebody start something and just not finish it? Like what was oh that that kind of is like the theme of the stump house tunnel. Oh, that is the theme <laughs> of the, is start something and don't finish. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it was a little, you know, I was a little disappointed. I knew that there wasn't going to be a lot up there. It's not we like just, we thought it. that there would be maybe like brick fireplaces. Exactly. Or something exactly. like that. Like what we saw at Paris Mountain State Park, the firehouse. Um, That's right. Yeah. You know, ruins. Yeah, the fire tower. Yes, house thank ruin. you. Yeah, yeah. But there was nothing like that, unfortunately. Nope. But the the story is really fascinating, and Donna's going to tell it in fun facts. But you can climb up there. There's there's nothing preventing you from doing it. And looking around, it's the top of Stumphouse Mountain, so you know you I, climb the top of the mountain, and there were some beautiful vistas there. Yeah, on that path when we got up to the top. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that again, though. I I don't think that the reward was worth the climb for I agree. me. I agree. Uh, it's worth it to do it just to try to find something but well so we've done that for our listeners and we can just go ahead and say don't it's not worth it yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you want to just do it just to get some exercise great right. but yeah there's not you're not going to see much up there's there. a reason that path is not very worn is because exactly probably a lot of people like us have done it once and are probably like, not eh. going to do it again <laughs> there's, there's, you can look at a fence up there at <laughs> yeah. the top and yeah. you you're right there is a very beautiful view I guess of, of Walhalla. The valley. Yeah. yeah. But you're looking at that view with telephone poles and telephone wires. Yeah. So there are better views. Absolutely. There's better views in the area. So, yeah. So, I, I mean, ultimately, though, guys, here's, here's the lowdown for Issaquina Falls and Stumphouse Tunnel. It's a very short walk to get to an interesting historical artifact in the tunnel. It's a very short walk from the parking area to the overview of a very beautiful it's a Queen of Falls. Yes. Nice place to have a picnic lunch. 100%. I will say this. Be sure to bring cash. Oh, because yeah. Because you need $5 at the gate to put in an envelope in, in one of those little envelope secure spots. I guess you could probably pay with a check, but I don't recommend it. I would just bring $5 cash, pop it in the envelope, put it in the slot box, and, and you're done. Let's say if you're after work and you want to do a quick waterfall just to view it. By all means, do it. It's two minutes from your car to the waterfall overlook. It, it's a can't miss. Yeah. And this is early March. So the leaves on the trees are not, it's not quite spring for those trees yet. So there's still a bunch of trees without leaves. And um, so they're not, this is not the most beautiful time of year, I'm guessing, to see Issaquina Falls. I agree. W with the trees. But the upside to the winter with the trees not having leaves is that you can see through the trees. You can see the falls better, perhaps. Yeah, probably a little bit better. And you can see the uh, the valley mm -hmm. going down and heading west. But I like leaves on trees. I'm ready for spring. I'm ready for spring, too. We saw some flowers popping out. Yeah, we did yeah. see some little yellow flowers popping out. The big thing for this, guys, is if you're in the area, say within an hour drive of Walhalla and you have a heavy rainfall, go the next day to Issaquina Falls because that's going to give you the best opportunity to see really roaring falls. It's yeah. kind of impressive because the stream going to Issaquina Falls isn't very big. Yeah. It's maybe five feet wide, maybe six inches deep, but that water was flowing yesterday. Yeah. It was really great to see. So would you recommend this? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Absolutely. Super yeah. fast. Going down to the bottom, while very challenging, is rewarding. I would do that again. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's popular in the summer. I would definitely bring my hiking poles, or one pole at least, to help me up and down Yeah, when I couldn't grab a, I, onto something. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how much area there is to grab, but yeah, definitely. It, it, I'd rather have them than not. Yeah. You know? The, the pool at the bottom, you guys can check out the photos. You'll see a photo of me filling my water bottle down at the bottom. It's probably mm, four inches deep, maybe 15, 20 feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good sized pool that you can wade in. And then there's different areas that you can put your feet in and plenty of boulders to sit on. It's, it's really a, a pretty, nice, yes. pretty nice area. Now, when we were heading back up from that, that area, from the pool down at the bottom, we encountered... A young couple who the the man was carrying a baby on his hip as he was hiking down. That was crazy to me. I wouldn't because if you fall, that, you're taking that baby with you, and there is plenty of places to fall. Yeah, even if you're young, strong, experienced hiker, even even with all that, you still have to go down these rocks quite a ways and step down like 
18 inch steps yeah. and make a immediate 180 pivot to try to get around. And some of the footholds are like two, three inches wide. Yeah. It's very, very tenuous footing. I was shocked yeah. to see him holding that baby on his hip. Yeah. I, I did maybe, see that he got down there yeah. safely, which was very <laughs> good. Yeah. I mean, maybe if you had that baby in a backpack on your back, maybe that's better. That would be better because at least you'd have a hand free right. to, to grab. Yeah. yeah. I just, if I was worried for that little family. So was I. So was <laughs> I. Thankfully, they made it down safe. Going yeah. up is typically easier, but I, I mean, with a baby, Still, yeah. with a baby, I don't know. Oh. Yeah. I would have never tried Oof. it with one, one of ours. Yeah. Th there's better places if you want to, if you have a baby and you want to let that baby play in water under a waterfall, there's better places. Paris Mountain, super fast. And <laughs> you don't have to climb anything and you or, can play in the water. I think probably even, probably even Looking Glass Falls in North Carolina. Oh, sure. But yeah. Stairs. Even then there's a little bit of, yeah. you have to climb over the rocks a little That's bit. That's true. But yeah, there are tons of places that, that are much safer for a little I, baby. I yeah. just played with a a hose in the backyard with my kids. <laughs> That's the same, same as me. <laughs> All right. So now uh, let's get into Donna's fun fact. All right. So for today's fun fact, let's talk about the Stump House Tunnel. The Stump House Tunnel is a historic landmark located near Walhalla, South Carolina. And it was supposed to be part of a new and shorter route for the Blue Ridge Railroad between Charleston and the Ohio River Valley. That's a long way. It is a long way. Yes. Until then, the only way involved going around the mountains to the south, going up through Georgia and Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. They wanted a route that went through South Carolina, through North Carolina, and into Tennessee. So construction began in the 1850s. They were trying to go through the Appalachian Mountains. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah. Because it's a straight line, right? So you right. want to get, if you're trying to get... That makes the most sense. Goods yeah. and produce quickly before they spoil. And also passengers, too. It's, oh, it, sure. Yeah. 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 Passengers. And that would be a beautiful ride if they had been successful. Oh, can you imagine? I can't. Would I have mean, been great. Yeah. yeah. So it was not a successful endeavor. They, they were not able to finish. The Stump House Mountain just kicked them in the butt. And it was just too much for them to finish. The construction began in 1856. And by 1859, the state of South Carolina had spent over a million dollars. 1859, a million dollars was a ton of money. Right. So three years and yeah. three years, they'd spent over a million dollars trying to get through this mountain. And they got a thousand feet. Yeah, they got. Yeah, it was actually... 1,617 feet oh, okay. in, um, but they were trying to get 5,863 feet in. So, so in three years, they got 28% of the way finished. So in three then, years, that's they got 1,600 feet. It's not nothing. It's but, not nothing, but it's about 10% a year into the mountain. Man. Yeah. That was going to take a long time. 10, 10 years, probably, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. And so what else was going on in history? This, like I said, in 1859, the state of South Carolina was like, nope, we're done. We're not spending any more money on this. But why do you think the government would have been like, yeah, we're stopping this now? It's not, I think it's not just the fact that the mountain was kicking their butts. I think maybe it's also because the Civil War was about to erupt. I guess, yeah. I mean, so when was that? 61? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so 1861 was the Civil War, and it stopped in 59. Right. Did they have enough notice that something was brewing, do you think? I don't know, but I yeah. do know that Abraham Lincoln was voted into office in 1860. Okay. So, so maybe, that's... Maybe they were like... Look, we're going to have to save our money for yeah. something. Some people different. might have seen seen it coming. Yeah. The the yeah. there had to been cuz you you know there had to been talk about Oh, I would think know, so. Sure. The it, north and the south were very opposed at odds, whatever you want to say. Right, right. So, you know, president so if if he was elected in 1860, right? So mm -hmm. he started campaigning in 1858. For sure. Yeah. Right. And so you would think that people could probably see the writing on the wall. Yeah. If, if he was doing really well, they were like, you know what? If he's elected, we're going to need money for something. I mean, I, I imagine that there were a lot of people in the South that were like, there's a lot of people in the South, but there's not a lot of voters in the South. 
Yeah. You know what I s- I I so this was at the time this was obviously before women could vote, mm-hmm. right? Slavery was still a thing, so For sure. so black people couldn't vote. Right. So it was really white landowners, mm-hmm. right? That was it. That could vote. Probably a very small yeah. number of people it's who not, were actually voting not compared super. to the, the north. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah, I wonder I know I'm going to like chase a rabbit down a hole here for a minute chase but... that rabbit <laughs> so so these were irish workers that had been brought in to work on the stump house tunnel living on the stump house mountain so i wonder how irish workers in south carolina felt about what was going on around them about the civil war that kind of thing um well they clearly couldn't vote right well because they were immigrants and not landowners so they couldn't vote i mean yeah maybe so did they think about the politics of it? Did they mentally choose sides? Did they say, sweet Jesus, what have we gotten ourselves into coming here? <laughs> you know, yeah. but I mean, or was it, was it still better than what was going on in Ireland? Well, wasn't there a potato famine mm-hmm. going on in Ireland yeah. at that time? So probably. Yeah. But only barely. I mean, so I don't know if your research uncovered how difficult it was to- in- to dig through a mountain Ugh. at that time. Did you look into that at all? No, not too much. It's... So they mentioned it in, the, uh, in one of the placards at Stump House Tunnel. Mm-hmm. So they were basically doing this 100% by hand. Hand drilled holes into the mountain, like three inch wide holes, putting dynamite in, blasting. And then digging that out by hand. That's crazy. And then chipping away at the rest of the stuff with pickaxes and hammers. So we saw a lot of smooth, like cylindrical through boreholes. Yes. Mm-hmm. We um, did. So, and they're all over the place in that tunnel. You can see them. And so that's where they drilled in and put the dynamite. But if you look at the tunnel, it's huge. Yeah. It's 25 foot tall, probably wide enough for a train to 15, go through. 20 feet wide, maybe. <laughs> It's impressive that they did this almost entirely by hand. Yeah. Not, not like the modern drilling that we have now with these hydraulic drills that'll bore through anything. This, and this is not, I mean, we're not talking about digging in the dirt. We're talking about rock. Granite yes. that they're going through. Really, really hard, tough really rock. Really hard rocks. Yeah. So it is impressive when you think about it that they were digging through this by hand and they got 1,600 plus feet in three years. That's, that's impressive. I guess I did kind of get away from the stump house tunnel, but I actually looked up how many Irish Americans fought in the Civil War. This never occurred to me before. Oh, okay. I I thought that it was, you know, brother against brother, American, American, you know, like for yeah, yeah, at least sure. a couple of generations here. Right. But there were over 150,000 Irishmen, recent immigrants that joined the Union Army. And then there were about 40,000 Irishmen who fought for the Confederacy. So if they're fighting in the revolution, not the revolutionary, the civil war, Mm -hmm. I hope that they had voting rights because now you've got me thinking. I don't don't, think they, I don't think they did. They might not have. No, I don't think they did. So, but they were fighting and some were fighting out of loyalty to their new home and some were hoping that their conspicuous display of patriotism might put a stop to anti-Irish discrimination. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean... They, that, th- that was an active thought in their yeah, mind. So, yeah. so again, back to these, these guys that were working on the Stump House Tunnel, they, maybe they were happy to kind of be... I don't know if you were ever happy working in conditions like that, but they... I, I mean, the only thing that you'd be happy about is that it's a steady paycheck. It's a steady paycheck, but and that is, maybe you're not affected by the anti-Irish I mean, if your whole community's Irish, right? If, yeah. if every, everybody around you... It's interesting that it was uh, almost a four-to-one difference between Irish who fought for the Union and Irish who fought for the Confederacy. Yeah. But it kind of makes sense because immigration came through New York at that time. Yeah. So you're looking at... Most of the immigrants would be in the north, right? As opposed to the south. Also, they might have had opinions about slavery and about uh, what indentured servitude, or they might have had some pretty strong opinions about that. I would think so. So the Irish have always felt like second-class citizens to the British Empire. Mm-hmm. So they probably saw the treatment of 
Humans. comparisons yeah. right they're like yeah. look they're treating these people just as badly or worse than we got treated yeah and by the british so and that's yeah it would make sense awful. that they would fight for the for the union absolutely yeah so we were a new country just figuring things out you know the revolutionary war was not that long before the yeah, civil war you, right 75 years mm -hmm. sure so many irish immigrants didn't know that accepting a u.s citizenship meant that they would be drafted into this war no yeah <laughs> they hadn't thought it wasn't it wasn't it was probably in the fine print <laughs> yeah i'm sure it was in the fine print yeah. and I'm, I'm sure a lot of these irish immigrants probably couldn't read right yeah. i mean literacy was pretty low across the nation not just yeah. in the irish community yeah it make your mark make you know, your mark just yeah. like an x for your signature or whatever also some of the northern irish immigrants were afraid that the newly freed slaves would come and take their jobs that that oh, would create, yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. more. So there, there was a lot. There Man, was a lot going on. A lot to digest there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This rabbit hole took me. It, it took me pretty. <laughs> you far. did spend a lot yeah. more time on this research than yeah. you have on other ones. <laughs> well, I mean, they weren't finishing the stump house, the, the you know, the stump house tunnel. So I was like, what was going on yeah. in people's minds around that time? Right. I don't know if you, you probably already knew this because you're, you're, you know, quite the history buff. But in my reading, the Irish also were not too keen on the fact that during the draft for the Civil War, there were two things that the, the rich had privilege. They, there was two things that, that were practiced. One was called substitution, and that allowed drafted citizens to provide a substitute. So if you have money and you have servants or you have whatever you can say oh you're drafting me oh i, I don't really feel like going to war so let me take take my servant yeah. in my place you know like that kind of thing that lasted all the way up until the war uh, world war one really isn't that nuts that is crazy it's nuts i mean i feel and to be honest it's still going on it's, it's just on. it's just not I mean, we're not looking at it and calling it by a name but yeah you and know. they're not sending somebody else in their place but yeah if they want to get and, and th thankfully there's no draft anymore right but if they don't want to do service, they don't have to do so. Even in even during Vietnam, the last draft that we had, yeah, they could get out of it pretty easy. I think I don't I mean, know. I I'm not rich, so I don't know. <laughs> there's lots of politicians okay. who got out of it. Well, the other thing was the it was called commutation. Commutation. Um, so that was allowing payment to avoid service. So these two things, the Irish were not keen on. I well, I mean, sure. If yeah. you think about it. They're like, okay, so, so here I'm are new... your three choices. You can be drafted <laughs> mm -hmm. or you can pay to not be drafted. I'm sure it was a hefty sum. I mean, it probably benefited the army <laughs> Maybe, quite a bit. Probably. Or you can send somebody else in your stead. And so the Irish people are like, I don't have that much money, nor do I have anybody that I can force to go in my stead. But these rich people do. Yeah. That's not cool. And also the Irish were kind of like, and I just got here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I literally just landed like two weeks ago. I got off the ago. boat. Like, like my feet are still wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. That sucks. I, I know. I, yeah. So all of that, I, that was the end of my rabbit hole. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So they, they lived in a village, a makeshift village up on top of the mountain, right on top of the uh, tunnel. Yeah. Called Tunnel Hill. Uh-huh. And so when I was kind of helping get you some links for this research, I went down the Tunnel Hill rabbit hole. Mm. And so Tunnel Hill was this village that had about 400, 500 workers at any given time, workers in uh, that were working on the tunnel itself. And apparently they had more bars and... What did they call them back then? More bars, as in a place that as you go to drink. As places, in places to drink, but also they had, I don't think brothel is the right term, but it was uh, saloons that had ladies that of were ill repute oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, working there. There were more of that than anything else up there. Huh. And so basically the guys would work, the men would work all day. And then they would spend all their money in the bars and brothels oh, man. In, the, in the little town up, up top. And there was a pastor who came up there, uh -huh. and I don't remember his name, but a pastor who went up there 
and basically brought temperance to Tunnel Hill. Wow. Like four months before the tunnel was shut down. Interesting. And so he somehow converted this very rowdy, very alcohol heavy, saloon heavy little town on top of a mountain to temperance. And so, so they stopped drinking and then they shut the tunnel down. I can't think that it would be a correlation there. I, yeah. They're like, hey, well, there's nothing to do here now. There's no, no <laughs> drinking in, in ladies. So, hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, you would think that they would be better, more efficient workers. Maybe it was too little too late. I don't know. When, Probably. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if they'd be any better. I mean, maybe. They they might be sober enough to go, this work sucks. This work really sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Also, I mean, there was like dynamite going off 24-7. 24/7. So How do you sleep in that? You probably sleep, you get yourself into a drunken stupor to sleep probably. And then, so when you're not drinking. Yeah, yeah <laughs> probably. So w- w- when, yeah, when you're sober, you're like, God, oh, man, is this how loud it was all the time? This, this is not, sucks. yeah, this is not working for me. Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, so Tunnel Hill was pretty neat. I was looking... I, what that's the main reason that you and I went up to the top of the stump house mountain. Cause I was hoping to find something there. Yeah. And I bet if you brought some metal detectors, some metal detectors, you'd probably find some nails, some horseshoes, stuff like that. Yeah. That you could find. So that'd be really cool. Yeah. Maybe something that we, I don't want to do. take something. I don't want to take anything other than my hiking pole up that primitive path, but. <laughs> oh yeah. Strap it on your back or something. Is I the only guess. Way to do it. Ugh. Yeah. So after the Civil War, the Unfinished Tunnel got attention for its unique natural properties. That was when they discovered that it had that constant cool temperature throughout the year. And in the late 1800s, the South Carolina College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts. That's a weird name. That's a great name. Is it? Mechanic Arts. Yeah. Now it's called Clemson University. In the late 1800s, they used the tunnel to store blue cheese. The consistent temperature and humidity were beneficial for the aging cheese. So they aged blue cheese in this tunnel. Yeah, yeah. For a long time. I mean, talk about like repurposing something. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Which I don't. I mean, was it just like sitting on the ground? I can't. I love blue cheese. You know that. I I like it on my salads and stuff like that. Built shelves and stuff. I don't know. I'm I, sure they did. I'm sure know. they did. I'm just You're just, I'm just Yeah. <laughs> just thinking that oh there's just blue cheese on the dirt ground. I don't think so. I think dripped on. I think animals would have eaten. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but yeah. So um I guess they're not they're not doing anything with blue cheese in the stump house tunnel anymore. And I want to say this to anybody who is a mountain biker. There is a stump house mountain bike park. So there's Mountain bike trails. Oh, up there. It, up there, is there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, it, when we went over to use the restroom. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. The the mountain bike trails. Oh, were, is there? A, okay. Yeah, near that. All right. Yeah, that's pretty great. It, yeah. Yeah, it would probably be a really interesting place to mountain bike. Okay, so this is part two of the fun fact for episode twelve. Exciting. Yes. So we're going to talk about Issaquina Falls now. The falls are named after a legend. The exact details of the legend vary as exact details with legends often do. Right. <laughs> Hence the legend and not history. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, it could be based partly on history, but, you know. So I'm going to choose to believe this is 100% real. You, well, the, because there's different, you have to choose a variation to believe that is real. And you and I kind of talked about this and... You found a little bit more than I did Okay, something, but yeah. we'll talk about that in a minute. But what I found was that a Cherokee girl named Issaquina, she's said to have leapt from the top of the falls with her lover. Her lover could have been either one, an Oconee brave, two, a white trader named Alan Francis, or three, a white silversmith named David Francis. So... Um, I don't know if Alan Francis and David Francis were brothers. It's and... weird that there's a common thread in last name, right? Yeah, for yeah. two, two of the two of the three. Yeah, in the story, they either die together or they land on a ledge out of sight of hostile tribesmen, eventually living ha- happily ever after. So, what? on the falls, if they if she jumped from the top, there is that first ledge mm-hmm. that you could land on. It's only maybe eight feet down, six to eight feet from the top to that first ledge. Yeah. And you can go up under that 
the ledge right above. So yeah. I could see how you could hide. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The story about the Cherokee girl who fell in love with the Oconee Brave, whoever it was that Issaquina fell in love with, the story ends roughly the same. Issaquina overhears her tribesmen planning a surprise attack and sets out to warn her lover, naming the local landmarks of Mile Creek, Six Mile, 12 Mile, 18 Mile, 3 and 20, 6 and 20, and finally 96 along the way. Those are all little areas yeah. that are still there today. Yes. Yeah. The towns of Six Mile and 96 and the creeks still exist today. Yeah. Right. Um, the landmarks are real and they refer to locations in the state of South Carolina. So mm -hmm. it sounds There's a like. a seed of truth here. Yeah. Okay. Although I did look up information on that because I had never, I'd heard of Six Mile. We'd been through Six Mile. Right. But I hadn't heard of 96. Booger Branch Road is in Six Mile. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the greatest names of yeah. a road, like, ever. But 96 I hadn't heard of. So I, I looked that up, and I looked up the origin of the name of the town of 96, and what I found was not connected to Issaquina. Okay. But I think they might should relook at that, because I looked up how far is 96 from Issaquina Falls. And it is 92 miles to that drive there. That is very, very, uh, driving. driving. That is very, very close. Four miles? Yes. It's just a path variation. Yes. Yeah. And, or did, did Issaquina live on the other side of 96? I mean, and it's interesting that she counted down, like, like started at 96 to count down to Issaquina Falls. Issaquina Falls is, well, didn't wouldn't she be mom marker one. Oh, I see. Wait. Because she overheard the tribesmen planning to attack. Them. Oh, she didn't. She didn't count from Issaquina to right to not, from well, the falls to to, to ninety six. Unless she did. I mean, talk about a long distance relationship, right? So, how did she fall in love with somebody who lived at Issaquina Falls? Did he near, live near the falls? Well, if she if she jumped oh, from the fall with her lover to, okay. and that's where they were coming to. Attack. So that would. So the story is, she lived far away. Her lover lived near the falls. I'm thinking. And she overheard at at her her home, tribe at her home at 96. Uh, or yeah, however far. Whatever. Away, yeah. And rode to his town, which was near the falls. Right. Okay. I see. Yes. I see, I see. She had to have ridden a horse. Even riding a horse, it would have taken days. I would think. Uh, I mean, horses go 10, 15. Maybe 20 miles an hour if you're running. Okay. So it would have taken a couple hours, a few hours, depending on the terrain. Depending yeah. on the horse, I would think, too. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But, and the path, too. I mean, th these were not paved roads like what we have. Exactly. No, this is a, this is a Cherokee trail she was riding. Sure. Not, yeah. a, not a highway. Driving between 96 and Issaquina Falls right now, today, would take two hours and 10 minutes in our time. And also, I was thinking it would probably be a dangerous time for a woman to be traveling like that. Not just other people, but bears and wildlife. Maybe. I don't know. But I think you have to think these natives are very used to the land, right? Mm -hmm. The land was probably the least of her concerns. Yeah. It yeah. might have been other, other tribes, her own tribe, perhaps. Settlers. Yeah. Yeah. So the bones of the story are that a Native American woman played a role in warning American settlers of an impending attack by the Cherokee during the Revolutionary War. This was oh, during... okay. The Revolutionary War. Okay. Right. Which makes sense because the Cherokee did fight with the English. For the yeah. They mm -hmm. fought with the English. Yes. Right. So I looked up the the population of ninety six, South Carolina. Um it was two thousand and seventy six people in twenty twenty. It decreased to 2060 in 2024. Oh, they lost a few. Yeah. So I don't know if somebody died or moved away. <laughs> yeah, it's 16 probably. One people. One family in four moved. Years. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. So, well, no, it's 16 people in four years. So it'd be, what, two, three families moved. Maybe. Yeah. Or grandma, just a really big one. Grandma died. Grandma died. I don't know. Sad. Sad. That's very sad. Grandma yeah. died. Maybe grandma didn't die. Yeah. So, anyway, there's a 96 National Historic Site. It's also called. Old 96 and Star Fort. And I want to go visit that. We should We should, we visit. should visit that. Yeah. 96 is the fort from which Montgomery left to burn all of the lower Cherokee towns in really? the Oconee County. Yeah, that was oh. the fort that he left from. Interesting. Yeah. That's not a great thing to be 
No, it's not great. Remembered Burned like, all those lower towns. Yeah. Oconee, Kiwi, Chuda. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, <laughs> this, <laughs> right. this National Historic Site commemorates the Revolutionary War events. Visitors can explore the reconstructed Star Fort, archaeological remains, and interpretive exhibits. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah. But like I said, there is debate about where the name for the town 96 came from. It may or may not have come from Issaquina. I just think it's very convenient that it's 92 miles to drive there from Issaquina Falls. Yeah. Like I said before, four miles Difference, is yeah. just a variation in a path yeah. that, over that great a distance. I feel like somebody should update the Wikipedia page about 96. You can do it. You can edit Wikipedia. <laughs> I, don't <know>. your... <laughs> I don't know if I, this is reliable enough. I mean, it's, it's a feeling that I have. Yeah. That... <laughs> yeah. So I, the, the little I, and I didn't do a lot of research on Issaquina, but the little I read is one of the legends has her hiding out in that in that area underneath the waterfalls until the yeah. tribe left. And then she and her lover moved to Alabama and lived happily ever after. Yes, I remember you saying that. So the legends that I read about said that she and her lover hid under that waterfall. There's a little cave under that first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what you read was that just she hid and then met up with her lover and, yeah. that, and that it was definitely a white guy. Definitely in the one that I read. Yeah. Right. It was a white guy. And... Uh, and they left that yeah that live in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So either way, either way, the gorgeous waterfalls is named after this perhaps uh, very brave young Cherokee lady. Yeah, can you imagine your tribe coming after you to kill you because I know. that's awful. Uh, I mean, from their perspective, though, she betrayed them. I guess unless they weren't coming after her, they were coming after him, hmm. and she was trying to protect him. The legend says they were coming after her. It makes it, it, I guess it makes her more brave and more of a hero if I they guess. were coming I mean, after it's, her. If this is a true accounting, that's brave anyway. Yeah. To ride that far to try to help somebody. Yeah. Or, or to save yourself. It's very brave. Yeah. I had read that she was trying to warn the Americans about the attack. The, the settlers. white settlers. Yeah. yeah. But the legend making her, making it, to where she has a romantic relationship with one of them makes it more believable for me that she would risk life and limb for somebody that she, she must have really loved him. If, if it's a true story. If it's a true story, it does make it more believable because why else would she risk anything yeah. for people that she I barely know knew? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um, a great story. Thank you for that one. It, there is a signpost that talks about, you know, one of the variations of the legends there at Issaquina Falls. So check it out when you're there. It adds a little flavor mm -hmm. to the to the falls itself. It makes it interesting rather than just, oh, here's a waterfall. Yeah. I feel so. like you talked up the fact that I was doing these fun facts so much that, you know, I feel like I, I apologize. It was a little disjointed. No, but... it's fine. It's fine. I, I love fun facts with Donna and I know our, I know our listeners do, too. So it, <laughs> no need to apologize. It was great. Uh, we, we enjoyed it as always. I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the city of Walhalla. When we were there last week, I think it was, I like to mention businesses who you can really tell are trying to create a wonderful customer experience. And we, we ate, it was sort of a brunch. It was sort of breakfast, lunch. We ate at the Mountain Mocha in Walhalla, South Carolina. It's a coffee shop and a sweet shop. Right in downtown. Yes. Yeah. And it's so much more. They have breakfast, lunch, ice cream. They have something called pour over coffees and lattes. I don't know what that means or what that is. It sounds fancy and I almost kind of want to try it. Yeah. But they were really nice, the people in there. Oh yeah, they were great. I didn't know this until I looked it up afterwards, but they have 18 different gluten-free ice cream flavors. We which, didn't even look at the ice cream. We didn't even yeah, look at the Yeah, we're not sweets people. Right. So we didn't we're really look at it. Avoiding sugar. And yeah. So, yeah. That's curious to me. 18 different yeah. flavors of gluten-free ice cream. We may have to try it mm -hmm. next time we're in Walhalla. Yeah. So they have great hours. They're Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 8 to 9, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. On Sunday, they're closed. I got a salad with chicken salad on top of it and raspberry vinaigrette dressing. It had, it had so many. It had... Blueberries, strawberries, and just, it looked really good. It was so big too, and it fed me for two meals, and it was it was pretty great. You had the I got the Sasquatch sandwich, 
It and was it was underwhelming. It was a grilled sandwich with ham, turkey, and cheese. And when you think Sasquatch sandwich, you think it's going to be this big giant sandwich. Right, because Bigfoot, Sasquatch, right. big is in the name of Bigfoot. Yeah. It was very thin. Yeah. It was very, very thin. It was delicious, but it was very, very thin. I was expecting bigger. Like, you know, some Dagwood something. Yeah. I was. So I don't eat a whole lot. Uh, usually, if I get a sandwich at a restaurant, I'll take half of it home. Mm -hmm. There wasn't enough left to take home because it was so, it was a flat sandwich. It was still delicious, but. If you're going there expecting something super this, big and hearty out of the Sasquatch sandwich, you're not going to get it. The salad was really big. The salad was huge. Yeah. Yeah. The I, salad was huge. I offered to share my, some of my salad with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and the chicken salad was very good. Yeah. All the, the, the food that we tried there was really good. And their coffee was amazing. Yeah. We bought some coffee and brought it home. It was um, pecan. What was that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, pecan praline or something like that. It's so yeah. good. It was really good. Yeah. It was really good. So anyway, I just wanted to mention them because they're in Walhalla and they are a business that is local business yep. run by locals. Good people. Doing yeah. a good job. Yeah. So now we're going to talk about the, our product review. We haven't done one in a few weeks, but here's uh, our product review of my water new bottle. favorite filtered water bottle. Yeah. My new favorite accessory. Yeah. So today's product review is my new favorite accessory, the ServiMate Ultra Filtration filtered water bottle. I got this on Amazon for $25. Now, if you want to get the link to it, go to our website, casualclimbers.podbean.com, go to the trail photos, episode 12, and scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll see a photo. And underneath the photo is the link to the product on Amazon. Now, you know, Donna, I love drinking out of streams and waterfalls, mm -hmm. but you never know exactly what's in them. Right. There's What's in the water? flora in there. Yeah. There's microbes. And so while it is mostly clean, I'm sure I wanted to be sure that I'm not drinking anything that's going to get me sick. Right. And so the reason I bought this one is because it has a four stage filtration process that has up to a 0 0.01 micron filtration capability. That's pretty great. That's amazing. Normal ones like the Brita has a 0 0.2 micron. Okay. This is 0 0.01. So it's, it filters out the tiniest particles, filters out all sediments, and it has an activated carbon fiber filter to reduce chlorine, bad odor, intercept heavy metals, organic ma materials, and other impurities. It is wonderful. Yeah. I feel so much better about you having this and drinking waterfall water. I, I, yeah. I'm really glad that you got this. Yeah. I, now, I will say this. You really have to. So it has the, the straw at the top mm -hmm. on it that the water is filtered up through the filter and into the straw. You really have to you have draw to on it pretty yeah. hard to get some water. But man, it tastes so good and clean when it comes out. It's really good. And then you feel 100% safe drinking it. Yeah. I've used it for, what are we on, two weeks now? Yeah. And I have not gotten sick a single time. And I probably drank three gallons well, of water, so full water out of this stuff. Yeah. So, so I, I'm feeling pretty good about it. What's nice about having a cup like this with a filter is that if, if you don't have something like, if you're doing a waterfall hike or even just hiking next to a stream, you have to carry your water in with that. And that's a lot of weight. If you have a cup like this and you're going to get water from the waterfall or the stream from the natural source, that's less weight that you're carrying in. Agreed. And so, you know, in my backpack, I have the water bladder on there and I'm going to stop carrying it as often. I probably will only carry the water bladder when I know I'm not doing a waterfall hike. Right. Because what I'll do is I'll fill my water bottle before I leave, drink it on the way to the waterfall, fill them up at the waterfall, and then I'll have water on the way back. Like right. you said, it's much less weight. And so this particular one, the Survey Mate, can filter up to 396 gallons of drinking water in one filter wow. before you have to replace it. So it's going to last a good long time. Do you on have a spare filter. filter for when this filter goes? No, or? but I will order one yeah. soon. You know, I, I mean, just to I, have on hand. I like to have. Yeah, just to have one on hand. Like I said, I, I've probably drank maybe three gallons. So I have yeah. 393 <laughs> to go before I need you to replace it. You got a little it. bit of time. Yeah, and it's, it's really pretty great. It's lightweight. The filter's by far the heaviest part of it, but even that's not that heavy. 
you put one or two in your backpack empty fill it up man and and waterfall stream water tastes so good it's nice and cold yeah it's clean water and this filters it out even more so I, i've been surprised you've you've let me you're like here taste this and I'm, i've been surprised at how sweet the water is it's great isn't it yeah like donna doesn't typically drink tap water i do and the water here in Greenville is pretty good. I actually like the water here in Greenville, but there is nothing like a waterfall water yeah. uh, for it. Now, this particular bottle says that you can drink out of lakes, but I don't think I'll ever drink out of standing water. Yeah. Just because so much more stuff grows in it. For sure. But I yeah. will drink out of streams with this. Something that's flowing. Yeah, yeah. something that's flowing that'll keep this, this stuff in there. Yeah, so I don't, it's rated for lake water, but I don't think I'll ever drink out of lake water. Yeah. I just don't don't see me doing it. Table Rock State Park is going to be a good place for this. Oh, yeah. There's water all over the place. You can come with an empty water bottle and fill it up every, right away. every step of the way. Yeah. yeah. So that's the episode this week, guys. Stump House Tunnel and Issaquina Falls, a very easy to get to waterfall overlook, a very easy to get to interesting historical artifact in the tunnel itself. And if you really wanted to challenge yourself, you can go down to the base of the waterfall or the top of Stump House Mountain, or both, like Donna and I did this week, yeah, and get some extra benefit out of the hike. An extra exercise. Yeah. An extra exercise. <laughs> yep. So thanks so much for listening. Please subscribe to us in whatever podcast app you use, and be sure to leave us a review. That's how our show grows. Feel free to check out our trail photos at casualclimbers.podbean.com. And if you have a question, comment, or just want to drop us a line, you can reach us at casualclimberspodcast at gmail.com. We'll so I think next time, Donna, we go to Issaquina Falls, I might bring, I might wear my Speedos and just kind of sit in the three inch water underneath the waterfall in my Speedo. Your Speedo? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. Why not? I just. Are I, you saying I don't look good in a Speedo? No, I'm not saying that. That sounds like what you're saying. Well, I'm not not saying it. That's that's <laughs> hurtful. That's hurtful. We are unfit hikers in the Carolinas, that's true. Roy. No, I look, here's the truth. I that would be horrifying. <laughs> Nobody wants to see me in a Speedo. So, short of that, I guess we're just going to have to see the guys out on the trail. <laughs> see you on the trail.